Morning, this is Mr. Willie in West Virginia. Today, I believe, is the uh, 23rd of January. I'm um, going to tackle a subject very tentatively because I know how easily uh, we are offended here in America. Um, but I'm going to start off with, the, with a scripture. I want to start off with a scripture that was in my devotions, and it's First uh, Corinthians 3.18. It says, We all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image. Uh, there's another scripture that talks about, as we behold him, we become like him. Um, you know, look out at our country and look at some of the controversy and some of the silly things that are being done in America right now. Uh, and you can't help but wonder why it's simpler for men to submit to one another or to give in to the desires of, of another person. Hollywood is a mess right now. There's so much controversy out there over sexual things that have been done to people years gone by, and I've... I've listened to it all, read some of it, thought about it, prayed about it. And, you know, as I go back to Scripture, it shows in Scripture laws that were given to Israel to kind of stay away from sexual sin. And I, I'm just going to throw this out to you all. You know, we as a nation have bowed to the gods of sex for many years now. And I can go back to when I was a youth and, and what I was taught and, and, and what you learn and who, and who teaches you. And, and, you know, we have a country where Hugh Hefner was this demigod of a guy that all men, or not all men, but some men thought was, man, this guy's living the dream with all the women around him and with all he's doing and with unveiling women to, to, to America. And you look at the movie industry and a lot of people... I think I'm a movie guy. I watch movies all the time. And, and what I've noticed about movies is a very slow, from a long time ago, decline in morality, in content, and a lot of fantasy thrown in, a lot of stuff thrown in to, to, that's all really sexual. Our advertising is all about sex. You know, when a woman in a bikini is showing you a car that's just trying to grab your attention it's trying to get you to behold her and subliminally see the car everything that's went on in Hollywood the whole you know the, what's going on with a lot of the actors and actresses um, how can we in a country that promotes sex the way we do be upset when people act incorrectly sexually toward one another how can you get mad at people for molesting children when you let your child go with somebody that you don't know, thinking that they're going to do the right thing? I, I'm not saying it's right, it's wrong, no matter where it ends up, but we're not paying attention to the way our country has gone, people. There are sexual deviants all around us. There are people that have an appetite for sex that don't even know why they do. But it's because people refuse to behold God. Behold is an old English word, and it's, you know, it's, you can, it's translated out of Hebrew, it's translated out of the Greek, and, you know, it just means to look, but it, it means to look intently. As we behold God, we become like Him. We have been beholding God a whole bunch of other things and our society has become like that people behold so much on TV that they're so confused at how to go into a relationship what what is a relationship really is what 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 is life what life really is when 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 your youth are, and people feel like they need to bite into a detergent so that they can become famous they're saying there's something terribly wrong with your life you're missing something in your life and you you, you got to do something completely outrageous to get people to behold you to look like you and then what happens is someone does it on the internet someone else sees and beholds it and wants to do it too 
We're a nation of followers, but we're following the wrong thing. A lot of actors and actresses went out to Hollywood pursuing fame and fortune, taking their clothes off, opening up themselves, opening up themselves to a life that has really kind of ruined it. I've been a guy that's been married several times and, and several of my women, my wives, and some of the women I've dated, a lot of them, really, it's unbelievable how many women were molested as children or raped or got into relationships with multiple people. And, you know, we think it's idiotic to be a virgin anymore. We think it's stupid. I, I've known of one couple, husband and wife, that were vir both virgins when they got married lovely couple, minister of God's love and his kingdom, and they're great people. And I see a wholeness to the way they did their life. Most of us didn't do that. Most of us jumped into sex thinking it was something no big deal, and it is a big deal, folks. God makes it a big deal. His desire is for us to find one person and spend the rest of our lives with them, giving ourselves to one another. And when we don't do that, we take away from the whole human experience in a way that will devastate and will cause things to happen wrong later on down the road. There's always a consequence for us deciding to do things our way. Moses went up on a mountain and when he came down from being with God, he had to put a veil on his face because the glory of the God, the glory of the Lord was so strong on him that people couldn't look on Moses' face. When you run into a person of God that really has behold, who has really beheld the glory of God, it's almost hard to be around them. It's almost, they almost offend the world around them. I get irritated when people try and enter into the space that I need to have with my Lord. When people try and rush my day, when people try and give me an appointment that's going to come in on that time that I'm, I've set aside for me to be with the Lord and to spend time in His Word and spend time with Him. And I'm, I'm not a super spiritual person, people. I'm somebody who has learned through time that uh, jobs, other people, relationships, children, all the things involved with living on this life can impede upon us pursuing the glory of God, to us pursuing His presence in our life. And most people would rather sacrifice that presence of God to do all those other things. I don't want to. I never have wanted to. I've done it and I've suffered from it. And I'm at a point in my life now where I very much covet my time with God, no matter where it's at, whether it's at church, whether it's here in my home, whether it's just sitting in my room reading scripture or studying or writing a letter or doing whatever. We've got to get to a place to where his presence is really important, that the Holy Spirit is something that's important because all of it is important to, to us living full lives as God intended. Everything else is going to be, you're going to come up short, you're going to come up empty, you're going to come up unhappy. And being a part-time Christian or, or, or a part-time believer, desiring for a full-time God, a God who, uh, as my pastor put it Sunday, has such a dominion and, and such a presence in the whole universe. He created everything and watches everything and can look down on the planet Earth and see all the billions of people and know and love and care for each and every one of them without missing a beat. He's multitasking like on a, on a realm that you can't even begin to comprehend because he misses nothing. He's everywhere all the time taking care of everybody, along with looking over the great expanse of his creation. How can you not love a God that has that kind of attention to details? He cares about you. Exactly where you're at right now. Right in the middle of your sinful life. Right in the middle of all those things you're doing that are completely contrary to what he wants for your life. He still loves you. But he loves you enough to want to draw you out of it, no matter what it is. You know, I'm not going to label what sin is. Sin is missing the mark. Sin is not doing 
what it is God called you to do on this planet. And, and, if, and if, if sex keeps you from doing that, if your job keeps you from doing that, if a relationship keeps you from doing that, if your desire to be an athlete or an actress or an entertainer or a politician keeps you from doing that, then you're missing the mark. God desires for us to draw close to him and to follow him with all our hearts. Most of us don't want to give him all of our hearts. We want, we want control. We want to be the kings. I'm teaching right now in our in our church about the kingdom of God, and my pastor is also teaching about it. Uh, it's a kingdom that has a king already. You don't need to be king. You shouldn't want to be king. You shouldn't want to rule your world. You shouldn't want to control the people in your world. God is the one that should control things, and he doesn't try to. He just loves us. If anyone has the right to control, it would be God, and he doesn't control. He, 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 he watches over and to some degree, he has some control, but it's not a control like our human control. He's not trying to molest you. He's not trying to rape you. He's not trying to take anything from you. He's trying to give you love, joy, peace in the Holy Ghost. But you'd rather take the things here of this earth that, that are just temporal. They're, they're not even for, 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 you know what, when you pass away, you're not taking anything. Anything that you have here, you're not taking with you unless you help lead someone to the Lord and get them saved. They get to go to heaven with you. That's it. That's why I do these videos. That's why I want these to go all over the place because I want people to hear the word of God, know that God loves them, and enter into his kingdom and be included in his family. I pray that you would take these videos and pass them on. You know, like I told you before, we're doing them on Facebook. I'm going to be doing some little transitional thing here, but I'm probably putting them on on uh, on YouTube and linking them to Facebook. Um, but um, thank you for watching. And thank you for passing it on. Thank you for not liking and still watching. You know, um, I hope God's word pierces your heart, transforms your life. And I hope to see you in heaven one day. Okay, peace. Shalom.